Minister really went wrong anywhere. I think okay. you have two different things here that caused the current situation. The first is the bullying and the trolling and the level of toxicity and negativity being directed towards the members of my party by the Likud and their allies. Look, the amount of volume of what's going on there in terms of harassing family members, close personal friends, uh, I can tell you, I spoke with Edith in terms of stuff that her children have to deal with and the frameworks of uh, the educational institutions that they go through. This is just stuff that which should not happen in a democracy. We're not a banana republic here where you bully someone into moving sides. Look, she was the coalition chairwoman. She was the chief whip. A few weeks ago, she was the one making sure that we had the votes, counting the votes to make sure that we went ahead and we passed this coalition. To throw this on the prime minister, I don't see that happening. But there is a second thing, and that is within the coalition, it has nothing to do with the opposition. And that it has to do with living up to the signed agreements, to the coalition agreements, to the understandings, to the pledges in terms of what has happened over the last 10 months since we've gone forward with this government. Look. There are eight parties in this coalition, and many times we've been told, listen, Yamina has the prime minister, so therefore they cannot ask for other things. Well, there were other things in our coalition agreements. There are other things that are very important to our party, to our constituency. If you look at the things being said by the other members of the Amina party in terms of the demands and other statements they're making, all they're asking for, none of these things are new, is to live up to the. But I, I do, I do want to point out, Jeremy. Some of those things require a majority in parliament. How are you going to live up to the coalition uh, th when you can't pass legislation? So let's talk a little bit about numbers here. Right now, we're in a situation where we went down from a 61-59 majority to a 60. 59 majority. Seelman has not joined the opposition. She resigned from the coalition. Should she decide to go ahead and vote with the opposition, she would open herself up to sanctions. And it's my understanding that she's not going to rush to vote against us on every single issue the way that Sheikli did, who's of course now facing sanctions after the Passover holiday. Therefore, and again, this is a very important thing to note, we went down to a 60-59 a majority, okay. and therefore we still have a majority. The 61st vote is important, but we do not need that until March 31st of 2023. That is a year away. That is plenty of time to go ahead and make up that one seat. Make it up? I, I'm sorry. How are you going to make up that one seat, Jeremy? There are a few different options. One is to hopefully bring E.D. home. Another option is to break off someone from the Likud, perhaps someone who would uh, not win a Likud primary race that could take place there sometime soon. Another situation is perhaps a break within the Haredi parties. There are ways to get to 61. But let's talk about numbers here. Actually, because, I ask a question. Because Netanyahu only has 54. He doesn't we, have We know 61. that. He can't no, I, I actually would that. like we to ask you a question that. in the back of the prime minister's interview. Are you or are you not ruling out cooperation? Not the joint list becoming part of the coalition, but the joint list cooperating from the outside to get that government the 61st vote, or at least to get it through votes and to stand to stop a no confidence vote. To reiterate what the prime minister said, uh, they're not going to be a part of the coalition or the government. But as Matan Kahana said in a different interview, we're not going to do anything that Netanyahu and Smorich did not do.